So welcome to BTeach. So first thing I am going to design is the connecting rod. If you see the actual diagram here, the original diagram here, you can see this here. So when the fuel is burnt inside, so this particular burning of the fuel will push the piston down. So naturally this particular connecting rod will be subjected to mainly the compressive load, it is a compressive force. Of course when the piston is moving up, even the connecting rod is subjected to tensile force and even subjected to tensile stress also. But mainly the power stroke is main stroke for us, it is the working stroke, it is the power stroke, it is the expan expansion stroke. So during the power stroke, this connecting rod is subjected to compressive load, compressive load, compressive load. Compressive load is also known as thrust. Compressive load is known as thrust. So mainly we design the connecting rod for the compressive load, for the compressive load. So that is the reason we call it as, this topic I want to call it as thrust, T-H-R-U-E-S-T, thrust in connecting rod. thrust in connecting rod. Thrust means it is a compressive force. So whatever the connecting rod that is there, it is subjected to compressive force. So this connecting rod is designed as a strut, as a strut. So strut is the member, strut and column. We have two things, strut and column, columns and struts. In strength of materials, you studied them. Column is a member, a vertical member subjected to compressive load. So because of this compressive load, the column buckles. So this you will call it as buckling, buckling of columns, buckling of columns. Whereas strut is Strut need not be a vertical member, strut can be any inclined member. So for example, a member is there like this. If this is subjected to compressive load, this is not a vertical member, it can be in any orientation. The thing is, it is subjected to compressive load, then you will call it as a strut, strut, S-T-R-U-T, strut. So we treat the connecting rod, because connecting rod is subjected to compressive load, and connecting rod can be in any orientation, connecting rod moves like this, like this. So it is not vertical every time. So this can be treated as a strut. By treating this as a strut, we design this and you see this, it is the small end, this is the big end. So if you see the cross section of this connecting rod, cross section of the connecting rod, you have this, this is the I section you have this horizontal centroidal axis xx, vertical centroidal axis yy. So because of the compressive load, definitely this is subjected to buckling, compressive load, com connecting rod, connecting rod is subjected to buckling, buckling means the sideway deflection. When a column is loaded like this, it buckles sideways. When it buckles, it buckles like this. So this is called buckling. So because of the compressive load acting on the connecting rod, it may buckle in two planes. It may buckle about xx. You see this. This is the cross section. It may buckle about xx like this, like this. In the plane of the connecting rod, it may buckle. This is the buckling about, buckling about xx, buckling about xx. It may buckle about yy also. So this is the buckling, this is the buckling about y y this is buckling about y y so while buckling you you have to understand one thing 
connecting rod is considered like both ends hinged for buckling about x axis it is considered as both ends hinged because you see this is a turning pair you have a, between the pin and the connecting rod you have a turning pair here it's not a rigid one you have a turning pair here so this can be treated as both ends hinged whereas both ends fixed for the buckling about y axis when this is buckling about the y axis you will consider this buckling as you will consider the ends to be fixed you have two situations here both ends both ends hinged and here both ends fixed so, by considering these things, we design the connecting rod. I conclude it now. Thank you.